Well, hello, hello. This is Brother West. This is Brother West. I'm back again. I'm back again. Um, I told you I was coming back. Uh, if you haven't, you should. If you get a chance to go back and check the prayer out. I uh, my first my first video I did earlier this morning was a prayer, praying against just praying against every negativity, praying against hate, racism. Just a prayer against it because and and, and the answer is love. The scripture says, perfect love casts out all fear. And in the family of fear, everything that comes with it. Everything that comes with it. And so, and so love. And so love is the answer. Love is the key. Because even love covers a multitude of sin. Love stretches. Love grows. And, and the greatest example of love is God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so that was a sacrifice. That was pain. And so oftentimes through our pain and through our sacrifice, that's how we show our love. Our love oftentimes is revealed or is felt. It's felt, it's felt, it's so, and it, 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 it is what it is. When you love something, you bear with it. You're patient with a person. When you love someone, when you love someone, when you love someone, you won't just throw them away. Because when you love someone, you're going to see the good. You're going to look beyond the faults and you're going to see the need. That's what God does to us. We're, unse we're, full of, we're in sin and, and undone and all of that. Born in sin and shaken in iniquity. And we didn't deserve his love. But grace, he brought, he extended grace. That's unmerited favor, love. And so unmerited favor is a gift, something that he's given. Even when we didn't deserve it. But he extended to help a friend. And so as God, if you can extend to help us as a friend, why can't we extend to help our brother and our sister? Even when it feels as though they done wronged us. Did not the scripture say to turn the other cheek? And so, but um, but what I want to do, I uh, like I said, I want to, I wanted to, I want to read some Galatians. Galatians, um, I want you to read Galatians 5. Galatians 5, and it's going to be, I'm going to read from the 16 to the 16 to the 16 through the yeah 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 16 16 to the 23rd verse 23rd I might just read it out to the 26 16 to the 26. And so it says that I got Galatians 16 and 26, but what, but what I want to do, I want to pray first. I want to pray for us. Galatians 5, that's going to be in 16. Galatians 5 and 16. Then uh, after I say the word of prayer, we're going to get to the word and, um, and uh, we're going to talk. And uh, you can put this in your comment. The, the title is Fight the Urge. Fight the Urge. You know when you want to have an urge, you want to do something, say something, respond, fight it. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. God, open up the ears of them that are listening, that they might hear, and that these words might be life to them. And God also calls my mouth to speak exactly what it is that you want me to say with clarity. In Jesus' name, God, I pray. And God, forgive us of our sins and forgive us of our trespasses. God, we don't want nothing to get in the way of his word. God, open our minds up. God, reveal, reveal your, your, your mysteries into our spirit, man, this moment, this hour, this second. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, Galatians 5 and um, 16. This I, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do these things that you would. But if you be led by the spirit, you are under the if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, fornication, uh, adultery, fornication, 
uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, hearsays, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, such things of which I tell you before, as I have told you in past time, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So in other words, from what's being said right there, from that point there is, if you develop, if you inherit, if you walk after the law, and so in other words, if you, you try to walk according to the Ten Commandments, if you, if you walk according to what you feel, if you walk according to the laws of the flesh, you're going to fulfill the, 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 the lust of the flesh. You're going to receive his reward. But if you walk after the spirit, which is faith, then you're going to receive what spirit has. And see, and see what it is, it's like, it's like um, if I can explain, it's like um, what you put in you, what's inside of you, is going to come out. What's inside of you is going to come out. And so, and, and so, and in other words, what you listen to, basically what you entertain, whether it be good or bad, if you, if you entertain negative stuff, what's going to happen eventually that negative stuff, you like a, a, a cup. And the more you listen to negativity, what's going to happen, that the liquid or the substance from that negativity is going to fill you up. And then eventually what's going to happen, it's going to come out. It's going to become manifest. It's just like seed time and harvest. When you plant whatever kind of seeds you have, whether it be a, a apple tree or it might be a, some grapes, it might be some pears or, or, or whatever it is, whatever kind of seed it is, once you plant it in the ground, when that harvest time come up, it's going to be that, whether it be good or bad. And, and the scripture says there are two types of trees, a good tree and a, corrupt tree and a corrupt tree, both bear fruit. Both may bear fruit because the scripture said a good tree will can only bear good fruit and a corrupt tree can only bear corrupt fruit. And so basically, basically also what God is trying to let us know also even with that is we need to watch and also to discern, to judge what's good and what's bad. Do not be deceived. See, because, because what a person listens to or what a person, and what's inside of a person, it's going to become manifest. And, and, and that's why he also tells us that not to, we need the, the, the discernment of spirit, that gift, because that will we'll be able to judge, whether it be of God or not. See, because the enemy, Satan, the scripture said he's going to come as an angel of light. And the purpose of him coming as an angel of light is to deceive you. Is to get you to think that that he's the you you think that he's the real thing, and when you think that he's the real thing or it's the real thing, it's God. Then you're gonna let your God down, and when you let your God down, you open your doors up, you open your house up, and that's all he wants for you to open your house up. And the moment that you open your house up, he's gonna begin to put seeds, his kind of seeds, twisted seeds, not just any kind of seeds. Now a good seed is up, but a seed that's twisted, a seed that's tainted, that's a tear. And see, a tear, a tear is called darnel. It's a false grain. And in and, and Greek, it's called darnel. And actually, it looks exactly like the actual green, actually real grain. And you know what? You cannot tell the difference. You cannot tell the difference between the two, between the good and the bad. The only time you can tell when harvest time comes. Does that sound familiar? And see, see, God want us, God want us to not to be led. He don't want us to be led by our emotions. See, because when you're led by your emotions, you're being led by the law of trespasses and sin. You're being led by the law of flesh. The law of flesh is what I feel. The law of flesh is what I see, what I taste, what I hear, all that. All that. And, and so that's why I said you got to walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit is not to, to, to identify things with what you see. Because the scripture said that the just, the righteous, and how do they become righteous? Because they have faith in God. Because they trust God. Because they believe God. And, and, see, and, see, and see, in order to be led by God, you got to become blind. In other words, you got to let go and suspend what you're trying to hold on to. You have to let go and suspend what you're trying to keep. See, because the scripture says... 
that who him who's tried to save his life will lose it. But him, to him who's willing to lose his life will find it everlasting. And so what's being said there is just this is a matter of being selfish or selfless. See, in order, in order to increase in God, you must decrease. In other words, you must give. You must sacrifice. The scripture says, Jesus said, if any man comes after him, he must, he must deny his flesh. So you must deny certain things in yourself. It can't be all about you. It can't always be all about you. Even the scripture said, you got to love your neighbor as yourself. You got to love your neighbor. You can't forget about yourself, but you can't forget about your neighbor. But the scripture said, to esteem your brother and your sister higher than yourself. If you ain't doing that, you ain't in the book. That's what Jesus did. Jesus, everywhere he went, he encouraged. He helped. See, the scripture tells us that we're supposed to be helpers one toward another. And so, and so uh, the, the title of my message is to fight the urge. It is to fight the urge. Now, let me get to why and what you need that God has given that he wants you to have, that he wants you to, to gather. The scripture says, Acts, and it shall be given, seek, and you shall find a knock, and it shall be opened unto you. There's a tool. There's a fruit that you need that's going to help you fight those urges. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to find it in Scripture. Now, where are we? We're at the, uh, we were at the, the, the 21st verse. Now, the 22nd verse said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is there is no law. So, when when you walk and you operate in the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, then the law don't apply. And so, the thing, the tool, or you can say the fruit that you really need and that God has given. God is given because it's something that you need because you can't, you can't do it alone or by yourself because it, it's time out to keep doing the same thing over and over. See, insanity is keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And I'm guilty of the same thing. And many of you, it's like you're a merry-go-round. It's like a cycle. Life is like a cycle. You keep doing the same old thing. You keep failing the same old test. You keep failing the same old relationship test. You keep failing the same old heart test. You keep feeling that same old condition because you respond the same. If you want the pattern to change, if you want things to change or to respond different, you respond different. Stop reacting, but respond. And so it's, instead of allowing the stuff to pull you, see, that's what happens. The enemy, what happens when something happens that you don't like, when there's a conflict, the hurt from your past, the hurt, the, the bitterness, or whatever, those voices become resurrected and it pulls you. It pulls you and it makes you say something before thinking. See, but God don't want you to say something before thinking. God wants you to think before you say something. And so the tool, my brothers and my sisters, that we need, we need, we need right now to fight that anger. Because the scripture said you can be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down. And so there's a place of anger. Yeah, you can get angry and become passionate. But at that place of becoming angry and becoming passionate, think. And say, God, feel me. God, reveal to me. Because at the place of anger is a place of revelation. God will speak to you like never before at that place where things and you're being tempted and you're being tried and something is boiling up and you at that place where, 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 the, where your water is boiling. That's where the place where Jesus can speak to your heart. I can prove it. The, the, the three Hebrew boys, when they were in the fire furnace, because they said, we will not bow down to your God. You can turn it up. You can do whatever you want to, but we know that our God is able to deliver. And the king turned that furnace up seven times hot. And when they got, when they was in that flame and the king began to look, and as they began to look, they saw them dancing. And the king had to look again because the king saw someone else in there. And he thought it was just three in there. But there was a four in there. And four is balance. God is bringing balance to somebody who's listening to me right now. So he's bringing balance. When you're able to see Jesus, when you're able to see the Son of Man in your flame, when you're able to see the Son of God in your situation, 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He, there's a visitation that he's given. There's a promotion that he's given. There's a revelation. There's a revelation upon a revelation that he's going to reveal to you. But also in the midst of that revelation of flame and in the midst of the revelation of the precious of life that you are standing in, he will cause you to die. He will cause you to die as David said. In the presence of my enemies, O oh Lord, thou hast prepared a table before me. And so that's my message. That's my message. And baby girl, about to get up. Time for to get up. But that's my message that fight the urge. And the tool that God gives the believer, you, you, and you, to fight that urge is temperance. And temperance simply is self Restraint. Control yourself. Restrain yourself. Because you notice one of the things that I've noticed is about with, 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 with habits and what I've noticed about with behavior. Oftentimes, if a person has a, a problem, a self control problem with not turning away certain foods. If they have a condition with controlling themselves in that area, not only do they have a condition in that area of as far as food, but also in other areas as far as emotional, as far as making decisions. See, it's not just in that one one area that there's a habit oftentimes, but that's just, that's just the one area that you see. But oftentimes when a person has a habit and one thing where they're impatient, they're really, really impatient or they're really temperamental. Oftentimes, in one area, if they temperamental in that area, it's in other areas of their life. They might be also, they're temperamental, they're angry. You find people who are angry, you can, you can, people can reveal their attitudes and how they drive. They can express their anger. A lot of times people drive fast and then turn corners fast, stop fast, always stopping fast, not really paying attention, stopping. And all of that, all of that is behavior. It's a behavior. It's a behavior. It's reckless. When you're reckless, when a person has a reckless life, when a person don't listen to rules and, and regulations and stuff like they do what they want to do, and then they drive the same way. No, no. And see, it's a behavior. They, they, and they, how they talk to people the same way. If a person don't listen to the teacher in school, it's a reflection. They don't listen to the parents at home. It, it, it's all a behavior. So those are my words. And But God wants us to have that behavior, that learned behavior, and that is self-control. He wants us to have it. God bless you. If you receive this message, someone put in the comment, I receive this message. God bless you. God bless you. And also, I want to let you know also that today is my beautiful and lovely and gorgeous wife's birthday, Crystal West. And happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, my baby. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> she probably gonna laugh at me. She really see this. God bless you.